Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another episode of Japan Business Time with Rochelle Kopp, the joy of Japanese business edition. And、uh, this week, the subject that we have is from Tofu Redin, and it is、uh, how it's a really good one, actually. It's how Japanese cope with working in Western businesses.、Uh, and yeah, so I guess we're talking here about Japanese who go to America to work and, and Japanese who join foreign companies in Japan as well.、Right. Yes, exactly.、Um, so hang around. This is a really interesting subject, actually. Yeah. I, I think we have a natural bias as Westerners ourselves to think、oh. of how Westerners cope with these Japanese companies. Right. And it's easy to forget. The Japanese have to cope with us. Right. Not easy. <laughs> These Hansei Shinai Gaijins and everything.、Uh, and, and there is. So let's go through. What are the challenges、mm-hmm. for someone raised through ja- the Japanese education system and college system and maybe been to one Japanese company and they're coming to a Western company?、Mm-hmm. Um, as a Western employee, what are the things you think Western employers have to look out for with Japanese employees and that、mm-hmm. Japanese employees need some help with, perhaps? Oh boy, that's a very long list of things. Can't wait to hear that.、Um, let's see. I guess I would start off by saying you know, Japanese often feel very intimidated by participating in Western style meetings. Oh, yeah. Well, well, the ex- not, there's not the line dance. <clears throat> right, exactly. It's、do. not the line dance. It's a free for all, and you've got to. <laughs> Talk louder and say more. It must seem like a、yourself. demolition derby to them, actually. It's very, very frustrating. And the thing that、yeah. I get all the time from American clients,、yeah. and, and particularly there's a lot of companies in Silicon Valley that really have this corporate culture,、yeah. of you have to be really frank and really open and really direct and say it like it is.、Yeah. And so, first of all, for the Japanese, getting that from the Americans,、yeah. it's just like way, way too overwhelming.、Right. And then, To be expected to speak up in that way. And, and the Americans don't realize that that's so not natural for Japanese to、right. have to do that,、yeah. right? So, coping in that environment, I think, is a really huge one.、Yeah. And I think it's also, you know, again, I'm talking about American firms, but the American firms that just don't get Japan. And、yeah. so then always being on the Japanese side of、yeah. trying to help. The parent company u n d e r s t a n d what you need to do to make something work here. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, and I can actually see、uh, from, a, from a corporate coach perspective,、um, it must be because Japanese generally would be kind of passive and, as you say, probably overwhelmed in these kind of very overly expressive environments. Right.、Um, they must appear, and I guess there's a real risk over time, that they would become very disengaged.、Um, so, how, how, how do you.、Um, So, what, what, what are the risks and, and how, how, how would you. What are, what are the danger areas for engagement with Japanese and what are the ways that Western businesses can, can manage that? Right. Well, I think it, it's really an issue of are you creating an environment where the Japanese feel comfortable、mm. making contributions? Yeah. And if you're expecting them to be in an environment where everyone has to scream at the top of their lungs or just be really assertive. Yeah. That's just going to be really difficult and they're just going to withdraw. Yeah. And so it's really realizing that you have to change your expectations、mm. or modulate your expectations、yeah. when working with Japanese. There is something I've observed,、um, which is well, when you have very, when you, a lot of international, a lot of global companies with very high communication and expressive sort of cultures.、Um, These are environments where Americans and、uh, maybe Latin Americans and, and Australians tend to thrive. And Japanese, and I, I think they suffer for, for just coming from a culture where they are encouraged and taught to be kind of polite and, and quiet.、Um, they don't get advanced as well, they get left behind. And you see, when you see the, when you see right, the right. global leadership panels, You're not Australian, that American, many American, Japanese British, those, and,、no. and the Japanese, and you say, wait, wait a minute, Japan's the number two market in the company, isn't it? And, and there's lots、no、of Japanese. smart Japanese people. How come they're not getting in those posts?、Right? And, and, yeah. and I understand the Western perception is, well, they don't even participate, so how can we treat them like a leader when we don't see them as a leader? But the Japanese side, they are thinking, what the hell? We're, we're making half your money here. Right,、we're, right. Well, why come we don't get any respect? Right? So there is this thing. You can misinterpret that quietness as like they're、do. okay. Yeah, lots of people do. <laughs> and、right? it can be a pretty rude awakening when you discover that they're not happy. Right, exactly. And, and well, I see so many、um, 
non-Japanese companies and they do their global engagement survey and then they see what the score is here and they're shocked, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Japan actually, I can think of examples where yes, they can throw up the most alarming statistics. And yeah. you get, and, and, and I've been in the situation where I've had the global guy what the hell? What's what's wrong? You know, I, is the building on? They think right, the right, building's right. on fire. fire. Yeah, exactly. Well, the thing is, it, it's very complicated because is it an issue that's happening in your firm that's causing that? Yeah. Or is it just the fact that in Japan engagement levels are low across yeah, the board? Because people are cynical about their companies, which we've also seen right, in right, these exactly. things come up. Um, could it be that your Japanese managers, yeah. who probably joined your firm from other Japanese companies, yeah. And then brought their way of managing into your foreign firm, yeah, and are treating their employees the way they did at their old company, and then you're getting the same problems that Japanese firms have. I mean, yeah. there's so many variables, and right. it's it's an interesting area, but yeah, yeah, um, but there is a. I guess it depends. If you've got one or two people only, then I think there is an impetus for them to adapt. Just as if you're the only guys in a Japanese company, you should adapt. But right. when you're talking about like having an acquisition or a partnership and you're talking about significant numbers of people used to Japanese business culture. Yeah, you have to think about these things and, and, and the biggest, I have seen so many disasters, fallouts of uh, divorces uh, of companies after significant mergers and usually that happens when you have a merger of equals. Right. Uh, and, Those are tricky. And the Japanese don't feel respected and that's where, that, that, that's exactly what happens. Um, so you have to, and it's always because they just assume they're hey they're quiet they they must be happy they're not saying anything everything must be hunky dory I'm just uh-huh. doing my thing, and it builds up and you got to be aware that don't take silence as um, in any situation with Japanese right right it as is. acquiescence or happiness you have to check exactly um, don't assume that they think the same as we do you know um, they don't no so yes um, we got more coming out uh, getting a little bit less joyous in this particular one but we got to get back on the joy okay. train uh, hopefully I just look you we're gonna do it we're gonna okay, do it. Yeah. So a few more episodes. Uh, Hang around. It's going to be awesome. See you soon. Mm -hmm. Peace.